Hi, folks. This is Dr. Rob Sivers. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. And um, just before we start, please make sure, check in the corner of your video that you've hit the subscribe button. Even though you may have done it before, YouTube has gone ahead and removed some of those subscriptions from a variety of different uh, folks that I follow. So I've had to recheck that. So just check that subscribe button. This channel is free. It helps us if you do that. Um, but let's get into today's, to today's topic. And one of the uh, key concerns that I have working in the space, we're heavily focused on macronutrients, but we really are under-focused to a large extent on the macronutrients that various foods provide for us. And as we get more and more experienced on a ketogenic diet, um, I think focusing on that, making sure that on a regular basis, we're getting our minerals, our vitamins, our trace elements from our food rather than from a pill, because we are easily taken advantage of that. You've got to take this pill. You've got to take this pill. And under COVID, you've got to take these things. You've got to take these things. Well, if you eat a healthy diet, you're getting in everything that you need and you're going to be healthier than any pill can make you. So uh, just recently, I a paper was shared with me. Now, this paper isn't even yet published, but it was produced by a group of PhD doctors in Utah who are not MDs, but they analyzed the micronutrient density of a variety of different foods. And I'm going to give you the range of foods and then a, an algorithm for perhaps getting this type of food in to make sure that your micronutrient levels over a long period of time are adequately taken care of as part of your general eating lifestyle. And, you know, what we've got to understand is that despite concerted efforts to improve diet quality and reduce malnutrition from the McGovern Commission of 1977, which were actually tasked with undernutrition and malnutrition uh, in this country, um, the problem is with whether you're using a keto diet, whether you're carnivore, micronutrient deficiencies remain widespread, even on keto and keto carnivore diets, especially among population groups with increasing needs, where diets are often inadequate in iron, zinc, folate, vitamin A, calcium, and B12. And this includes athletes, it includes people that are exposed to COVID and other viruses, um, and it includes muscle-eating carnivores. Carnivores are primarily eating ribeye steak or the muscles and the fat from animals. There is a need to understand the density of micronutrients and their bioavailability across diverse foods. And this is one of the big criticism I have, a criticism I have with the supplement industry. They may put something at a very high concentration in a pill form. But if that's not being absorbed or if it's not able to be absorbed and distributed in your body or you're just pooping it out, you spent a lot of money on something that doesn't have value. And the best place in the right concentrations to get our micronutrients from is from the products we eat, be it vegetable or animal products, in the right ranges, in the right approaches, in the right capacity to be absorbed. So I always look to food to provide what I need, not some pharmacy or some pill or some person trying to make money off me by creating a scarcity or a deficiency. So there's a need to understand the density of these micro, micronutrients and their bioavailability across the foods that we eat and the suitability of these feeds to meet requirements, not for the population as a whole, but for me specifically. And we don't want to suffer the long-term consequences of micronutrient malnutrition that may not be visible or predicted by a particular disease like diabetes or obesity, but that just may reduce optimum health. Not in a measurable way, but we just feel off. Maybe we have some fatigue. Maybe we have some hair loss. There may be some things that are just not in the right proportion or missing from our diet. So the list below identifies the top food sources as identified by this group of PhDs in Utah um, for those commonly lacking micronutrients, even on a keto carnivore diet, which are this list is essential for optimum health to support efforts to reduce micronutrient malnutrition in those individuals, uh, even amongst keto carnivores. And this group then rated foods according to their micronutrient density. And I'm going to give you the range and then you can pick and choose which you're comfortable eating. The top sources of priority micronutrients. Number one, bivalves. Oysters, mussels, uh, um, 
clams, that type of thing. So you're eating the whole animal except for the shell. And when you eat the whole animal, it typically has everything in it for life. So bivalves are an excellent source of almost everything. A little bit low in folate content, but otherwise an excellent source of everything. The problem is a lot of people don't like them or they're difficult to get hold of. But we eat a can of oysters or a can of mussels or fresh mussels or fresh clams on a fairly regular, regular base, uh, basis in the Cyvus household. My wife doesn't like them, but my son and I, he'll eat oysters until the juices are running down his throat. He's 18 months old, guys. I know. Um, the next set of foods that are very dense are animal organs, particularly liver and kidney, uh, particularly liver and kidney. But the liver in particular has a very, very high micronutrient density, slightly low in fat, uh, which is a macro, but excellent, excellent, excellent. You can either eat liver alone or you can camouflage it by mixing it in with ground beef or mixing it in with other foods. Then we have the category called small fish with bones. Small fish with bones, sardines, uh, mackerel, uh, white anchovies, where you're eating almost the whole fish and you're eating the bones and everything else. Because human beings tend not to eat foods that are high in calcium unless they're the whole animal or there's one other category because we don't chew the bones like big cats and that kind of thing do. So um, small fish that include the bones, the bivalves, the crustaceans, and then the source of calcium milk cow's milk but it should be full cream milk or you get the, the full the, the whole milk in the u.s and you add some heavy whipping cream to it but milk and cream have a has a high concentration of calcium where most of the foods that we eat don't um and so milk products are excellent and then the other one that's excellent is eggs but eggs have everything in them to form a chicken but are somewhat deficient in calcium so an egg and cheese omelet is an ideal thing to get both of those in. Canned fish with the bones, mutton, lamb. Then we go down to dark green leafy vegetables, avocados, and actually nuts. And I was surprised by this, but tree nuts are actually relatively low in human micronutrient provision. I thought they would be much higher because a nut is a whole plant, but it's actually pretty low. So tree nuts are not as high ranking as I would have thought they were. And then we've got things like olives and tomatoes, but full cream milk, whole milk with added heavy cream or goat milk or high fat cheese are excellent sources. Then we come to the larger animals, the pork, the mutton, the, the beef, and to a much lesser extent, to a much lesser extent, full cream, plain yogurt, fresh fish, pulses, teff, and canned fish without bones. So those are way, way lower on the micronutrient side, which is interesting because I wouldn't have predicted that. So this list is absolutely excellent. I'm going to put the, the full lists on um, uh, in the show notes here. You can reference that. Or if we talk in the office, if you're a patient of ours, I'll provide this information for you. But this list provides insights into which foods to prioritize to fill common micronutrient gaps and reduce micronutrient malnutrition when following a keto carnival way of life. Much, much better than pissing away all your money on pills and tablets and capsules and things that people love to tell you you need. Um, I take none. I take no supplements. I use a lot of salt. I use electrolyte mix. And the only supplement I actually take is a 3 omega fatty acid krill oil. Other than that, I get it from my animals. And probably that krill oil isn't necessary. I just have a history of Alzheimer's. So folks, work micronutrient days into the cycle of your foods. Eat your high-protein, uh, high high-fat meals on a regular basis, but add in, add in some micronutrient meals. That list is broad enough that everybody can find something. Everybody can find something. I hope this resonates. I hope you, you learn to prioritize these days and these meals in the course of your weeks. Be healthy, guys. Be healthy micro and macro. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. If you want to visit this in more detail, contact me or Cheryl, our dietitian, who can help you with the details. Um, text or WhatsApp 561-517-0642 to set up a visit, to set up a consultation with us. And we can check your blood work. Both of us uh, can check your blood work. I've got a coffee ground in my mouth from my, from my coffee. Uh, both of us can check that blood work. And if you like our content, if you like what we present to you, 
throw us a couple of bucks at Patreon. I don't sell anything. I don't pitch anything. I don't make money from what products I sell. But throw us a buck, Patreon or at my um, uh, the PayPal account. It's a, it's a 5013C charitable organization, Robert at Jack's Children, J-A-X-C-H-I-L-D-R-E-N.com. Thank you.